Hello everyone, Michelle here from The Creative Cove. Thanks for joining me today. Um, I recently put a post on, um, I believe it was a Facebook page or Instagram, uh, about carving these little erasers. And um, people had asked me how to do it, so I thought I'd show a video. So I usually use uh, a linoleum, not a linoleum, like a lino rubber uh, that I usually buy off of Amazon. Um, and I ran out and I felt like carving. So I was sitting at my desk here and I found an eraser sitting there because I draw. So I have, I always have tons of erasers, all kinds of different erasers. And uh, I thought, well, I wonder if I could carve in that. And I could because it's super soft. So uh, I went to the dollar store and bought, bought some more. So these are just $1.25 and you get three of them. And you are limited to the size, obviously, in this package. But uh, they're a lot of fun. They're super, super soft type of latex, I guess. And uh, they're really easy to carve. Now, the, or the, the cheaper pink ones you can also carve as well. They're a little bit more rigid, so they take a little bit more effort to carve. But basically, you can, you can carve any kind of rubber as long as you have a sharp enough tool. So the tool I do use, I was given by a friend, and it is made for carving uh, lino. So it has a, a V edge. I did uh, a couple of videos on how to carve, um, how to carve stamps, and I'm just trying to find. So I had mentioned in those videos this little kit I bought off Amazon, and it came with some lino sheets and a bunch of other little bits and pieces, blades. So if you don't have um, one of these, it does make details more difficult, but you can use an X-Acto knife. One lady had suggested uh, to use a pencil and pull the eraser out and squeeze the edge together to create this kind of, this kind of carved hole here. And my, my pencil's cheap and is a little bit too soft. Um, so it's not strong enough to cut through, but you can see if you have a, sh if you have a hard type of metal at the end of your pencil, it's a great idea. So it creates a carving tool. So there are ways to get around using actual tools um, made for this, but, uh, it does make life easier with the, with the appropriate tool. So that being said, let's do some, let's do some carving. So it's about just being, uh, just having something simple carved out. I'm not a very good carver, so I just have fun with it. I do a doodle on here and then I try printing it. So let's do a doodle. So with these little erasers, because they're so square, well, rectangle, I do like to give them a border. So I am going to, I'd like to draw a line that I'm going to carve out. So with, with carving, what you carve away will be negative space on your print. And what you leave behind will be the positive space, which is the, the actual element that will print, if that makes sense. So when you're carving, you have to kind of concentrate on what to car cut out and what to leave behind. So for example, I leave these behind and this is what will print. So here it is here. And it's also the reverse, right? Because you're gonna flip it over and print it. So if you're doing words, you have to make sure you do them in reverse. So this, this leaf is this leaf here, and so on and so forth. So you can see what I take away becomes the negative space. So let's do, I haven't really thought of something specific to, to cut here, but um, let's just do maybe a, a big leaf. I don't have one of those yet. So I'm just gonna draw a leaf. And of course I like botanicals, so I'm going to use botanical theme in my carvings. And then I have to think about what I want to print. So this is gonna come out, and then I'll probably carve a vein through here and some veins going up here. So drawing it and carving it are two different things. <laughs> so I'm just gonna take my tool, I'm gonna to go up, I'm going to see if I can bring you in just a little closer. Try to remember that you are in close. And I'm just going to carve out what I don't want to print. And you can see how soft and gummy this 
eraser is and how nice it carves. So I try never to put my fingers in front of the blade. Um, you'll learn real quick how painful that can be because sometimes you can slip. Now the linoleum, the, I keep calling it linoleum, the lino, the pink stuff that I normally carve, I find very slippery. But this stuff is so soft that the blade sinks in real deep quite fast and it's not quite as slippery. But it's so fun. I mean, you can you can so personalize these little erasers and they're tiny. So they're kind of charming. They're a quick little easy addition to add to your little repertoire here of stamp collections. And they're cheap. You know, the, the, the initial tool might be 15 bucks or something, but it will last you a long time. And, uh, but then you can just about carve anything. This is no original idea. I'm sure people have done this for years. Um, but like I said, I was just sitting here and I felt like carving and I looked around to see what I could carve into and I found these little erasers. So I thought, yeah, let's give it a try. And now I uh, really enjoy carving into this eraser. I just need to find bigger erasers. <laughs> That's the next challenge. So there's all the negative space carved. And now I'm going to put some detail in in the um, leaf. So I'm going to now I'm going to lighten my pressure and just kind of grab a thin line as best I can. And this takes practice. I still haven't got this down pat yet. But you want a very thin peel because any little thin mark on this will show up in the print. And I want to try and keep the weight of the line very thin here. And sometimes it's really hard to see what you've carved, so you have to print it. And we'll do that in just a second. And I'm just going to go up at the end here. I'm going to make sure all my bits and pieces are off. And then we'll print it. So I've got my... Let's just get rid of these bits. So I've got my um, Coco exclusive inks here, and I'm just going to load it up on the stamp. So already I can see where the ink sits, and there's a little bit of residue here, so we'll get rid of those. And there's a little bit that needs carving right there. So I'll try it again make sure there's no little rubber bits left behind and we'll uh, we'll do a quick print here and see what we got and there we go so now you can analyze it you can look and see what what maybe you want to change so I think I want to I want to clean out these edges here and maybe correct this a little bit so let's Clean out this edge. I'm going to run it up. Try and get a nice clean edge on these corners. And you just keep working away at it till you get something you like. And again, if you screwed up and you don't like it, what did you waste? 35 cents? And it's still an eraser. <laughs> don't get me wrong, you can still use it as an eraser. So really, you haven't lost anything. And you can get different bits. Like I said, in that kit, it came with a few other blades, but this, this tends to be the one I use the most. And I kind of like, oops, I kind of like a messy edge here like this. So I think I'm gonna put that in. Now, if you have steady hands, you might get a perfect line, but my hands have never been steady. So I just kind of, carve away and create this little texture. You can do a pattern in here. You do a series of patterns in these. That would be really fun. You know, like shingles or bricks. And just add that to your collection of stamps. It's probably easier to carve that inside line first. Okay, let's see here. Maybe clean this piece 
this up here. And uh, the stem as well, I wanted to tidy up a little bit. It's a bit bulky. So I think I'm gonna go cut some of this side off. Okay, let's try stamping that, see if we like it. That's kind of cute. I do like it. I'll maybe make these a little bit longer. Very light touch on the ends here. That's what I have to practice. So the lighter, the light, the thinner the line, the, the more delicate the cut, right? I mean, the, <laughs> the more delicate the cut, the thinner the line. <laughs> there we go. Let's try that. Yeah, I'm not too keen on this part, but that's okay. So there we go. There's a, there's another one you can add to our little collection. You can make a whole series of these for three bucks. <laughs> All right, let's do another one. So what else can we do? Again, I like to do a border. So first I'll give a, I'm gonna maybe do a thinner border. See if I can pull that off. And I'm just using my Micron here, 0 0.3, uh, 0 0.03, sorry, it's an archival ink. Um, it's what I use most of the time, but you can use a pencil, ballpoint pen, whatever you got. And I'm just gonna do a much thinner line this time, thinner border, I think. Um, what should we do? Maybe a mushroom? I've been really into mushrooms lately. So just a, a pretty simple shaped mushroom here. Because again, I'm, I'm not a carving expert. And I just like to have fun with these. So let's start carving the negative space first. Carve out here. here. So the more detailed the drawing, the more intricate the carving. And uh, if you're new to it, you want to start with a relatively simple shape like I've been doing here because I'm pretty, pretty new to carving. And uh, and then as you gain more skills and more confidence, then you can get really into some really fun details and real intricate patterns. Maybe we'll do a pattern one next. Let's see if we can do something fun like a brick pattern. Take your time carving away. And again, I'm using this V-slotted style um, blade. It's my favorite, but if you buy that kit off Amazon or somebody gives you a kit, use all kinds of different blades and see which ones you like best. Okay, I'm having a hard time seeing what I've cut here. up around the edge. Might have to print this first to see where I'm at. Just make sure I got all the bits and pieces away that I want away. All right, let's try printing it real quick. I didn't do a huge amount of ink there. Just enough to see where I'm missing so I didn't carve that corner. So we'll carve that. Okay, so maybe put a little bit of detail in here. So I'm gonna give myself a thin, as thin as I can, lying across here and that was not very thin. <laughs> I could feel it, it grabbed pretty, pretty deep. 
thin line across the top of the mushroom. And then maybe a little bit of lines going up on the frilly bit here. And then maybe we'll just carve some holes out and make a little dotted mushroom. So just think in terms of negative and positive space when you're carving these. You're not getting into details like shadow because either the ink will grab and print or it won't. So it's black and white. That's pretty much the way to describe how to paint the, uh, how to, how to uh, carve these. Either one or the other. <laughs> okay, little dots. They're a little too perfect, so I'm going to break up the pattern here a little bit. I don't like perfect. Okay, a little bit more texture in here. Just for fun. All right, let's try printing it, see what we get. Sorry, wiggling my camera. So there's the ink on there. And I'll just print it. So I knew I did a deep line there. I knew I screwed that up. So I'm not big, not a big fan of that one. Not a big fan of that line, that's for sure. So maybe I can gently incorporate it into a texture or something. And that's what I find. I'll just keep playing with these. And some I, I really love the results. And others I think, okay, well, that needs that definitely needs some work. And I just keep playing. I just have fun with it, though. I try not to stress myself even with the camera rolling right now I try not to stress myself out about making a masterpiece I'm just having fun experimenting and playing and either it's going to work out or it's not I'll take a little bit of this off and again it's pretty inexpensive okay let's try printing this now Oh, there was something else I wanted to fix to this corner. I didn't like that corner. I'll add that to you. Let's clean this up. Right in here. And your top. Just kind of thin it out a little bit. So you can see that the eraser gets weak as you carve more away. So it gets a little bit harder to carve with less eraser in there because it just gets a little softer. There's less resistance. And even these are fun to use in your journal. That's not so bad. That's kind of cute. I like it. I'll maybe take a little bit more off here. A cute little thing to just punch in a journal. Oops. Oh, that had pieces on it. <laughs> okay, let's try one more with no bits and pieces. It's got bits and pieces. There we go. I think I got them all. Kind of cute. I like it. All right, so there's those. Let's see, you can make a little collection, and it's a dollar fifty so far. <laughs> let's do. Let's try a pattern, shall we? Maybe, uh, maybe a brick. 
guess you need a brick pattern in your journals. So I think what we'll do is just draw the bricks. So I try and make these rectangles all the same size. And let's go right off the eraser this time with no edges. Let's try that. Okay, and then the next brick line would be down lower and in between the last brick line. And then again, pattern repeats. So, I mean, you can see the possibilities in these tiny little rectangles of erasers are pretty endless. Let's see if we can do this. So, I'm going to carve the edge of this one off. Now I'm just going to carve the grout in. So the bricks will print and the grout will be white, not printed, so to speak. So here I might switch blades on the edges so it's a little bit neater. And then the grout line here and a grout line here. And another grout line up here. See how hard it is on the edges because there's no there's not a lot of resistance. Okay. And now we'll do grout lines in between the bricks. And you can make these lines rough so it's not perfectly neat. But this is a really good practice too, making these kind of patterns. Practice your skills of holding the, the carving tool. I think I got them all. Oh, there's one here. So we'll see how that prints. So you can see I went up right here with the blade. Well, I might just kind of curve that out so like the, the edge of the stone is a little funky. All right, let's try it and maybe we'll play with that some more. Missing this. This line right here going off. Again, no resistance, so it's hard to carve. And a little brick pattern. Oh, I left some some plastic on there, some rubber. That's kind of cute. So as you can see, they're perfect lines, so you could take your your knife and kind of beat up those lines a little bit or even put a little texture in the brick just for something different just so it's not so perfect but I mean, you can just see you can just have so much fun playing with these i hope this gave you some ideas and uh, how to create your very own kind of fun little mini stamps using erasers cheap erasers even better so i'm hoping to find some big erasers somewhere and uh, make bigger stamps but these little tiny collection of stamps is also really fun and they're fun to send to friends or exchange with people if they're into it as well they could send you yours your then yours and vice versa <laughs> And just have fun. So there, I put some texture in. It might be too much texture. But let's print it and find out. So make sure there's no bits sitting on there. Yeah, there's bits. Yeah. 
something different, a little brick wall. And you can do the reverse, so you can carve away the you carve away the stone and leave the grout in, and you get a completely opposite stamp. So <laughs> here's a sample of what you can make out of cheap little dollar store um, erasers. So and then you can just decorate the simplest of things. So here's some business cards that you throw in your printer. And you can quickly embellish it with one of your own personal made stamps. How cute is that? Well, I hope you like today's video. I hope you give it a try. And I hope you subscribe and hit the like button. And feel free to leave a comment on anything you might like to see in my channel. I appreciate the feedback. And uh, have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Bye.